sticking with the European themes, break down the latest, uh, the latest uh, trend that we're seeing in inflation, because a long time it was a pretty simple story of disinflation. Is it a bit more complicated now? I, I don't think it's actually all that complicated. I mean, we have seen that the, the big moving parts, so the, the energy shock, the food prices, core goods, they all went up, they've all come down. Uh, what we're left with is just a little bit of inflation from the, some of those sources, and now it's just services inflation, which is the last shoe to drop. So, I mean, really, that, that's what we ought to be focusing on. That's what the ECB will be focusing on. And in fact, I mean, I think the ECB's probably already seen enough on the inflation side of things uh, to feel comfortable in cutting. What they're actually now pivoting towards, moving the goalposts as ever, is wages. And so they're, they're, they're more focused on that now over the next few months. Right. So if we get, and we're expecting Eurozone inflation to come in at, what, 2.5% later on today, down from 2. You might have a different forecast. I was looking at the, that was the, the consensus, average yeah. of the consensus, sorry, on the, on the Bloomberg terminal. I mean, we heard from Luis Guindos saying that what he was looking for, you know, they have to be patient until they saw a clear sign that we were approaching 2%, and then monetary policy would be adjusted. I mean, that seems like a fairly flexible definition of when you move, doesn't it? I mean, two and a half sounds like we are sort yeah, of approaching I mean, two. I, I think that's exactly it. Basically, the ECB could cut whenever they want. Mm. There's nothing in the data, really, which has prevented them from doing so. The main thing stopping them from doing it is their own intransigence. So what we need to think about as well, and you mentioned it right at the top there, was what's going to happen in the US. Will, they, will the ECB feel comfortable cutting if the Fed isn't? And I think probably the answer to that question is no. And so we should be looking at the PCE data. That is probably going to come in hot. And so it's going to be a bumpy ride. They always tell us it doesn't matter, don't they? That I comparison know. with other central banks. Yeah. What, an, what an economist take. Um, Jamie, there's a concern, a, a, a tail risk concern, a very small concern. There's going to be some sort of reacceleration of inflation in the back half of uh, 2024, potentially early 2025. Now, if you look at the Spanish numbers, they're not super hot by any measure, but they are marginally higher. I know we don't really look at Spanish inflation as kind of this canary in the coal mine, but could it be? I, I mean, actually, often Spain is one of the good leading indicators of Eurozone inflation. It does seem to move a little bit faster. But in this, on this occasion, I think if you look at like the big strokes, I think what would you actually have to see for inflation to reaccelerate? Well, you need to see companies feeling so comfortable with the demand outlook that they're starting to widen their margins again. That's quite unlikely in a very low... Well, as headline inflation has come down, they haven't got that cover anymore, so that's very unlikely. Yeah. And the second is you have to believe that people who are bargaining over their wages are going to be successful in getting like a high payout. I think that's not very likely either. So those two things not being too likely, I mean, the reinflation story, I think, is, is pretty much dead in the water. But, you know, we'll, we'll see. Is there... <laughs> I mean, you say that now. Yeah. <laughs> you just jinxed it, Jamie. <laughs> I've said a lot of but but um, is there any concern about the reaction function from central banks on both sides of the Atlantic? If we're talking then about just in the corporate earnings this morning, we've heard services data, wage data, these contracts that you're talking about actually hit the bottom lines of a lot of these companies. It takes a couple of months for that to show up in the data, and then a couple of months for the central banks to react on it. Yeah. Could they be late to the game if we do see that reacceleration? Um, well, I mean, the main thing they can do now is, if they, if they are really worried about the reacceleration, is, is just not cut. I mean, I think we all probably agree that policy is restrictive enough. Uh, although maybe there's some questions around that, but I don't think we're likely to see a reacceleration of, 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 or re, a reignition of the hiking cycle. That, that seems quite unlikely. It's more going to be that if things disappoint, they're just going to stay tight for longer.